everyone, one about here, and welcome back to another indie game lightning round, this time for the Steam Next Fest, which is going on for the next week from June 10th to June 17th. It is packed full of some of the best demos I think I have ever seen from a festival. There's apparently about 4,000 of them, and I'm only going to be able to check out a small portion. Uh, even at a conservative estimate, it would take me about three months to get through every single demo that I've got installed if I was doing two videos a day. So instead, I'm going to be mixing some, some demos into one video. Well, I'll give this game points for drama right off the get-go. Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to the Void Rot demo. It is... it's a Metroidvania. It's giving me grime vibes, but I think it's maybe a little bit more Hollow Knight inspired. Either way, let's awaken and see how this goes. So the demo is available as part of the Steam Next Fest. If you want to pick it up and play it yourselves, just follow the link in the description below. Across many generations, the ice-covered straits of the Gaudia Archipelago have remained still. Ancient creaking voices recount tales of a city of progenitors long lost. Dead gods buried far beneath the surface world. At the cusp... I like the hatching. The, uh... Oh, I forget what it's called. What, The, uh... Yeah, the lines that they're using kind of the shading. Uh, it's just such a nice texture. I wish I was good at making it myself. Uh, but I always get, like, dis disorganized. I guess you don't really need to be organized to pull it off, but still. It looks like it follows a fairly specific pattern. Nah, not really. At the cusp of each century, it stirs. In times... In the times heralding the Red Star... Its glaciers rupture, its ice thaws, and shimmering ichor once more bellows forth from the husks of the progenitors, infused with the purpose of its long-dead hosts. At these times, some claim a seductive call summons them to the straits. The silken voices of the progenitors worm their way across the lands, beckoning each to pursue their own ambitions to seek out the runes below. In the wake of the siren song, Delvers set out... In search of riches and fame, scholars venture to regain lost knowledge, and eccentrics consume the shimmering ichor to gain its creator's favor. Yet deep beneath the surface, something else stirs, aching to burst forth. Alright, and we're just in. And, oh. It's a Metroidvania that actually specifically plans on you going left. That's weird and wrong. This is very Hollow Knight, but in a good way. It actually looks quite nice. Caretaker. Hallowed Ardent. At last, the seal crumbles. At last, you are here. Long have I tended the candle flames awaiting your arrival. Please do not avert your eyes from this hideous shell. For I exist to serve. Our holy mission is at hand, and the city festers with the unclean. Far below, the city of elders still remains. Those who whose guidance heralded the first emergence of the Red Star, our fall beneath the seas. You must descend with the tongue silent. Their tongue silenced. The city's rebirth may finally commence. I'll mark the chamber on your map. Meanwhile, I shall prepare the shrine for your return. Others must be made aware. Many souls will surely come. Bye. If this is the Metroidvania that wants me to go left, what happens if I go right? Oh, this guy. Awaken all that would see your divinity for purposes found in devotion. Harold's recent journeys. The council still remains. Silence their wicked tongues, so the city's rebirth may finally commence. Return when the deed is done. All right. And it looks like this is just a dead end. Fair enough. Dead end for now. Also, I'm seeing a creepy cocoon up there. Oh, though our character might not actually be one of the Delvers. Our character straight up might have might belong to this society. Question? Sword hopping. Yep. It feels like a fall may be a little too fast, but I could be wrong. Okay, I have some kind of gem. Let's go over here. I attack wicked quick, which is kind of nice. Uh, where am I going? I like being able to return from whence I came. Well, I can't get to that anytime soon. Yeah, so this is where I started. That's where I fell. I can't go up for that shiny thing, so I guess we are actually just going down this, this direction, at least for now. 
But yeah, I like I like sword hopping. I'm glad they have it in this one. It does feel like it needs to uh you need to float a little bit more after a sword hop. The art is fantastic though. Like, if you're gonna be making a Hollow Knight inspired Metroidvania, you can't skimp on the art. It has to be on par. And Okay, so this is this is something I uh, I might as well talk about a little bit. Metroidvanias are in kind of in a weird spot. Uh, like I don't know how many of you have played Metroidvanias. Avidly, I'm assuming if you're watching this video, you probably have played at least a couple. Save progress. We also heal up, and whatnot. Ooh, hello. Touch the thing. I've been squelched. I am now a ball. I'm assuming this is where we get some kind of power up. Slide. Acquired slide. How do I slide? There we go. It's not really much of a slide, but it's there. Uh, so Metroidvania is in a really weird state where the genre has never been better. I Like, I'm not even being hyperbolic with that. Metroidvanias are... There are so many good ones. There's so many, like, incredibly well-made, inventive, creative metroidvanias that no one's ever going to play. Uh, and that kind of sucks. Because I, I really like the genre. I think it's genius in a lot of ways. Where to divine um, remnant. Largely because they're one of the only games that really has a strong sense of exploration. Most other games don't. Yeah, you got open world games, but the worlds are often too big. Uh, for you to properly explore them. The only thing close is immersive sims. Um, and, like, truly to some degree, I actually would love to see more Metroidvanias go for, like, an immersive sim route. Okay, it doesn't look like it can kill those things. Where you really can just go wherever you want uh, freely as opposed to relying on Metroidvania lock and key mechanisms. Uh, hold up. Artifact fragment. Hurt a bit. I wonder if the sides of those would hurt me. Possibly. There we go. And so, like... I'm often sent Metroidvanias that I think are really good. Uh... Yeah, this one very much included already. It, it's lacking a little bit of the game feel that I'm kind of hoping for, but everything else about it is perfectly solid. Um, and, like, much of that could be fixed. It's mostly just the how fast do you fall uh, and how well does sword hopping work. I think the camera and the way cameras work also feels a little awkward. Dormant salt receptacle, so extra healing. Looks like I gotta go down, though. Let's see. Like, visually and lore-wise, I'm immediately already interested in kind of what's going on. It's... It's got that kind of, like, where the hell am I? What even am I? That I would look for in something kind of Hollow Knight-ish. To be born is to be of the faithful. No god of the people demanded worship of themselves above any of their siblings. The faithful would find their god among the pantheon. It was an inevitable and beautiful process. Now the gods are vanished, and the f and to be faithful is to despair. Untold thousands denied their birthright and fell into bleak sorrow, abandoning hope, but few lingered knowing the gods are never truly gone. And no matter how long they must wait, a sign will present itself. These will be rewarded for their faith. But so like, one of the marks of qualities is very much just like a you know, are you at least on par? Oh, that's just the grass. Can I look down? I cannot. I would like the ability to look down. To be able to say, like, hey, what is beneath me so I'm not just dumping dumping my body into a pit and then dying horribly? And, like, as... I don't almost say as like impossible of a task as it is. I would argue that aesthetic 
Hello. Oh, tender stranger, would you spare a moment for a poor unfortunate soul? Worry not, for I am like the others, although my burdens remain great. Here, come close, feed the stone, feel the stone. Yes, a pungent draft seeps from below. You could jump and strike the debris at the right moment. It might give way. Go ahead. Well done, kind stranger. I shall venture forth and see what can be gained within. Just run along now. Tough bugger. There we go. Yeah, I'll still say the uh, the fall speed is a little rough for sword sword pogoing on top of an enemy for a while because uh, it's very easy to fall and take that contact damage. And maybe the point I would make is you know keep it quick if you wanna get rid of the contact damage. Oh, it's shooting. Well, that's a problem. You know, maybe if some of the enemies are spiky, give them the contact damage. But maybe not some of the other ones. Okay, can't do anything with that. We're probably going to get beasted here. But I'll hold on for as long as I can. Unfortunately, it doesn't look like I get any of my salt back, which is slightly problematic. Because that means I am... This is how much HP I have left until I can find a save shrine. At Hollow Knight did a good job with having the heals kind of recover the more you hit an enemy. Uh, yeah, I don't think I can get to that. Maybe I can come back that way. I guess this will probably just get around it by having a bunch of save shrines. Or who knows, maybe there's other abilities. There we go. I don't think I'm going to be able to jump that. Here's a question. Can enemies be hurt by traps? The answer is no. But you can kind of cheese their AI by walking in and out of range repeatedly. The other question is... Do spears have a horizontal hitbox? Don't look like I can do anything with this. At least not yet. Looks like I it's one of those rotating puzzles. You change the orientation. I want to test if spears have a horizontal hitbox. But I think it would be foolish to try right now. An artifact fragment. Keep trying to find other things. That was so dumb. Now, do we leave anything behind? No, we do not. So that's a plus. That the only thing I lose is time. And it should genuinely be easier for me to... There we go. It should genuinely be easier for me to get through this again. I'm certainly not going to take as much damage from Spearsley. Odd that it won't let me bounce there. Oh, I see. Ah, so Spears do not have a horizontal hitbox. Okay, we know where the boss is. <sighs> Awkward. It's a question. Okay, so you can actually sloop through an enemy. Let's see if I can do that to this guy. Nope. 
Oh, you can kill them. Ow. Deserve that. Okay. I don't have any ranged attacks. Oh, but I got him. Guardian defeated. Guy's messed up looking. Can I get through here? Hopefully. There we go. Shard of Vite. So three of those gain max HP. Fair enough. So that was just like a random mid boss guarding a. Uh, a. Uh, what? Oh, you. Yeah, so rude. What else do we do? I mean, I guess we go down again. Problem is, this this place sucks just as much. Keeping me alive. Oops. I was hoping to sword pogo off of it. But yeah, between the fast speed and the short strike distance, it's uh kind of easy to just... Eat, hits, and die. It's fine. Okay, where do we want to go? Do we want to just go past this? We might as well. It's shorter, and yeah, the spears are not a problem, so you might actually be able to just walk straight through them. And who knows, maybe there's a progression system. that'll let me have, like, a better sword pogo. There we go. Okay. Now that we're not making extremely foolish decisions. No, I guess I had been here, hadn't I? At some point, I've gone through this room. Hello? Guardian seal. Okay, can't do anything with that. This is busted. Avoid that. There he goes. I'm, I'm learning. I'm improving. The combat system feels fairly good so far. A little hard on my hands, but is what it is. Yeah, I'm not, I'm not much for Metroidvanias anymore, unfortunately. Uh. At least the, like, really high action, high reflex, high challenge. Oh, oh, right. Of course, we know there's a map. I want to check settings. Yeah, there's no accessibility settings. I was kind of hoping there would be. I'm not, uh, so... Playing Hollow Knight was kind of the first and last time... I don't want to say, like, first and last time I was really going to be able to do that. Because I can go back. It's not as bad anymore. Um, but when Hollow Knight had originally come out uh I had like a fairly successful series on it and so I played it you know start to finish over the course of you know a month it's Hollow Knight it's not a short game and that was all nice and good but boy my hands in the middle of it were just having the worst time okay cool I can hit I can hit him from above There he goes. And so it's one of those where, like, I don't think I can touch that without hurting myself. It's one of those where I'm leery of going through the process again, much as I love Metroidvania, as much as I love Hollow Knight. And would absolutely adore. Play more? Uh, yeah. Oh, hello, cutscene? Oh, no, the door's opening. Shall you don't need to chime in. But yeah, I would love to play more of these games, but as I get older and my hands get worse, uh, 
like, it is legitimately a little bit harder for me to play some of these. And so I'm always like, yeah, is there an accessibility option? Or is it just, like, a bit slower? You know, there are some slower, more methodical Metroidvanias, and those I can play easy. I think this one's mostly fine. But I can definitely feel it getting there. I oh, know you can break these guys. I figured since I could hit them, I can make them go away. Let's go this direction, though. Because this might be a save room. That's a something. I'm assuming this is maybe like, hey, did you fight all the bosses? It's probably the case. I haven't seen a save, sh save room in a while. But for me, it's always minor things like parry windows or contact damage. Like, if I could play one of these games and there was a contact damage slider, I'd be the happiest camper ever. You know, oh, do you, you know, do you want just kind of weird enemies to not, or like certain enemies to not do contact damage to you? Say like a big boss that isn't spiky. Okay. I guess it would be kind of hard to handle in an equitable fashion, and uh, maybe not equitable fashion, but you know, how would you communicate this enemy does contact damage versus not? I think the real answer is just cover them in freaking spikes. This might be, yeah, checkpoint room. The other one is, uh, rather than an, exactly an accessibility settings, RPG leveling in a Metroidvania, very few of them do it, but I personally love it. Like, Bloodstained was kind of difficult at times, but you could cheese it with the RPG stat so it didn't feel bad. So even if it did, you know, if the, if the going got tough. Uh, let's see. Even if the going got tough, it was kind of one of those where, like, you knew you could find some cheesy monster ability. Or level up a couple of times and it would be easier, maybe. Hawk. Who stands before the council? The eternal voices of the light. You reek of the old ways, yet we do not recognize your form as among um your form among the flock of the sisters. It matters not all who dwell beneath must serve at the behest of the star. Your presence within our halls is an affront. Challenge. Fool, then be undone by our hand. This is kind of god seekery. Was it god seeker or god gods in shoot? I forget. Yeah, the problem is, I'm not sure. I think I have to. I think I have to just smack its face off. Makes a funny ass noise. Uh oh, its face is open now. Oh boy. Okay, next phase. Or different council. I see. So it only shoots horizontally. It's this one shtick. Got him. Okay. 
Come on. Yeah, there's a cooldown. What? I kind of wish the slime was actually like... Kind of like a crouch. Is that it? Did we get him? Like, if I could actually stay slimed, at least for a moment, longer, and kind of, like, even double back if I wanted to. Okay, dormant salt receptacle. Are you joking? Okay, there we go. And this is probably double jump? It's probably double jump. Ledge grab. Ooh, they are slow walking the abilities, but honestly, that's fine. To stand within the storied halls once more, the world is not as it was, as it was. Yet the stone remembers, the beacons hearken, and the more wayward souls return to these buried halls. Here we gather, as we all once did. We ask but for the honor of serving the Grey Pyramid once more. In For in devotion lies purpose. Countless souls still drift through our once great city. Light the beacon so they may find their way. Anything up and over here? No. And there's probably some stuff I could go back for too. Maybe. But yeah, the big one for me, going back to Hollow Knight, uh, was actually... Uh, there was an RPG mod. I think it was called, like, the Bonfire mod or something. But it let you, like, level up and there were perks and some other stuff like that. And it was just really nice. It, uh, it made the game considerably, like, more... Uh, it made the game considerably more, like, um... I don't want to say casual, because it was still Hollow Knight hard. It just uh, gave me an edge that I needed to make the game a lot easier. I don't think this necessarily needs to do that. It's mostly just an uh, an ele element of like, yeah, that would, that would help. I don't know. Difficulty curves are difficult to talk about, because it's one of those where it's like, yeah, you do kind of want Dark Souls to be hard. You want Metroidvanias to be challenging. But on the flip side, like, I don't know. I don't. <laughs> Well done, kind stranger. I shall venture forth and see what can be gained within. Collect many things you see, yet long for nothing more than the blessed hiker, the very lifeblood of our long-dead gods. Equally sacred and profane, I sense it upon you as well. Would you not see fit to lighten the load of a poor, covetous soul? So you can buy Ancient Cipher. A sphere that will bounce off surfaces before vanishing. Astronomer's Band. Light Orb that can be stuck to increase, its, struck to increase its damage before traveling forward. Arcing Vorpal Blade. Slow moving orb from which vertical beams erupt. And uh, one additional health. Let's grab the Chakram. Let's grab the Slave. And the rest I'm going to have to go get some more artifact fragments for. Okay, so relics and souls. Crests offer passive boons that remain active after it's been equipped, and relics house powerful triggered abilities. Void charges are replenished by visiting chambers of reflection or by hitting enemies. So we can go equip stuff. So it looks like I only have slots for two. I do like the ability or the idea of being able to equip two different abilities. Well, there's an artifact fragment. Sir, please don't move. Ah, shoot. I'll find him later. Well, the chakram's pretty good. Be gone. Okay. And yeah, it charges quickly enough. So I don't have to worry too much about running out or anything of the sort. Okay. Well, do we keep going? Do I leave it here? That one's tough. We beat a boss. And I've seen a fair bit of it. 
Okay, so I can't get through that. I guess we continue on down here. I don't know, like I've very much been talking more kind of generally about Metroidvanias rather than this specific one and about kind of the, the challenges that they specifically might have to deal with over the course of like, I mean, getting people to play them. Because I think there is very much a fan base for Metroidvanias. I, I don't know, it's like, it's weird to talk generally, but I think the biggest problem that this game has is that it is a Metroidvania. And that's not a derisive thing, it's just that the, the market is very unfriendly to them. You know, some of my absolute favorite games this year are Metroidvanias. And almost none of them have like a thousand reviews, which is a little rough. Because they deserve so much more care and attention than they got. I think it's either people are really picky about what they play, or it's just one of those where it's like, don't want to play it unless it's Hollow Knight again. And that one's, it's such a hard hurdle to get over. Wait, there we go. Damn. Bye. Ow, didn't work. There we go, Shard of Vitae. I wish picking one of those up would heal me as well, but alas. Now, does that just give me a, a fragment on my life bar? It probably does, yeah. Rude. It's okay, we're doing fine. And then that might be a charge for my magic meter. Probably. If I had a guess. Can I throw the chakram up? The answer is no, I cannot. I don't like the cut of this guy's jib I'm leaving. Okay. Eat my dodge for some reason. Guess I might as well heal up. I think my max HP must have gone up for fighting that boss. There we go. I thought I'd be out of reach. I thought I'd kill him faster. Clearly I'm getting a little sloppy. It's fine. But either way, I do think this is genuinely one of the better... Oh, good. Just free healing from that thing. This is genuinely one of the better Metroidvanias I've played in a while, and this year is packed with them. The aesthetic alone carries it carries it incredibly far. Um, purely from, you know, merit of, like, I want to look at this game. I think even more so than Hollow Knight. This is Hollow Knight, but with Eldritch Horror as opposed to Bug Eldritch Horror. And as somebody who is, uh... I don't want to say I have... What is it? Edemophobia? Or... I'm not afraid of bugs, but I do not like looking at them that much. And Hollow Knight got around it with the masks, but either way, this feels so much more, like, interesting uh, from an aesthetic perspective. And, like I was going to say, it's one of the first on a aesthetic, aesthetic level to match. Which I think is huge. Mocked up Shell of the God Cradle. Acquired Living Talon. What is that? Oh. It's a spear. I am wondering if I'm... Ow. If I'm seeing too much here. The developers were kind enough to give me, like, a slightly more advanced version of the game? Wait, no, but I'm playing on the demo branch. So I shouldn't... I shouldn't actually be seeing things beyond what I ought to be seeing, maybe. Oh, those shards that were coming off the boss earlier. That's why I had so much health. So, breaking each of those masks was healing me. Well, that's appreciated. Ow. Dude's got range. That's fine. Yeah, I'm being really sloppy here. 
but the music, the art, the animations, the environmental design. Oh boy, bug beast is still too spooky for me. Or did it actually just die? I don't see it anymore down there, so we might have actually finished it off. Maybe. We will see. It doesn't look like I can go any further this direction either. Oh, that's fine too. So, I think I'm going to leave it here before my, my wrist starts giving me problems. I think I've seen enough to say that, like, if you liked Hollow Knight, you will love this game. It is very well made. It is very pretty. It has that kind of weird lore that you want to learn more about. You want to kind of puzzle out the mysteries of, like, what is this weird cathedral kingdom place that I'm currently exploring? What is going on? I'm clearly not human, but... There are humans who explore here? Uh, you know, where are they? Pfft. Rude dude. There we go. They're not that bad if you just kind of hit and run them. I think that's kind of genuinely true of this game in general. In general, that like, hey, just don't be overly aggressive and you'll actually be fine. Oh, you can break these open for loot. That's cool. I don't know. I, despite my like whole like, oh, the only problem with this game is that it is a Metroidvania. That's more of kind of just like a sad statement of like Metroidvanias are probably one of the most like handicapped genres in existence at the moment. And it is just so much harder for them to... Weird. I have to figure out what the deal is with this spear. It doesn't seem to do damage. Nope, no idea. Uh, but yeah, I wouldn't say Metroidvanias are necessarily maligned. I think it is just very much a matter of like, there are so many of them, there are so many good ones, and many of them only innovate on like small increments from the core formula and that is legitimately a little little bit difficult uh to like even choose between all of them like which which ones are worth playing and not at least they often are also kind of short so it's not as bad that there are so many of them because you can kind of just say like yeah i'm just gonna pick like five metroidvanias to play and be done with them in the time it would take you to play through a single ubisoft game for the same price that we would take for you to buy a new Ubisoft game. Okay, that shock room's good. I like the ability system. Like, I think there's a lo lot to love here. Um, and who knows, maybe its similarities to Hollow Knight here will be a very specific strength. I hope it will be. I, I definitely feel like Metroidvania va fans are maybe too much, uh, too much of picky eaters. And they're missing out on some really good ones. If they would just play more of them, maybe. I don't know. I should definitely, like, reach out and figure out, like... You know, for the people who played Hollow Knight, how many other Metroidvanias have they played? And so on and so forth. Because I think that's a question I'd love to see answered someday. For now, though, I think I'm going to leave it here. Include this as part of a lightning round video. Yes, the spears do not have a horizontal hitbox, which I appreciate greatly. It's always silly when you walk sideways into spikes and die. Never made any sense to me in a video game. Anyway, with all of this said, yeah, let's just move on to the next game, at least for now. I'll come back to this one when it comes out when there's more to it. Uh, but for now, I've got so many other games to cover, man. Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to the Trash Goblin demo beta. Uh, it's a, effectively as part of the Steam Next Fest, but I've got access to it early, so we're gonna dive right in. It is a, it's a sort of puzzle life sim game where you're a goblin uh, tending to kind of like a, how would I describe it? You're cleaning off like little artifacts and relics and baubles that adventurers give you and you're reselling them uh, to people who actually might want them. It's really neat and it's got a lovely kind of, I want to say it's a painted 3D visual style and it, it just has like impeccable vibes. 
So welcome to the cozy, or sorry, welcome to the Trash Goblin demo. In this cozy shopkeeping game, you're a little goblin with big dreams. The uh, employee of Imon, the kindly antique dealer who works upstairs. Your goal is to sell trinkets and save up enough money to start your very own archaeology business. Sacks of goblin nose water delivered to your shop every day, so chip the dirt away and find whatever is hiding underneath. Sell them as is or spend some time cleaning them to hawk them for a higher price. Since you've, uh, once you've bought a sponge, of course. Manage your time and make the most of every day. Or just enjoy pottering in your cozy little space. It's up to you. Okay, so, first and foremost... Oops. I thought I remembered how to play. Okay, I wasn't wrong. Drag the sack to the space, grab the chisel, start working. Oh, I see. Okay, so chip away the cruft to reveal trinkets. Chipping away will gradually re reveal the trinket hiding underneath. If you can chip away the parts containing the trinket, they're marked automatically. Okay, so that is... There we go. Now, do we have anything else? Yes. It's a bottle! We got 11 cruft. Congratulations, you got your first trinket. Put your tool down with right-click, drag the trinket over to the stash, and drop it in. And we can check it later. I think we can also clean things, but we gotta get a sponge. Is this not the stash? Oh, that's the stash. I thought the stash was like the toolbox for some reason. Okay, so my stash. So we can have up to 48. What does clean cruft do? I guess it just hides it. All right. Put this here. Oh, wait. Hold up. I might have something else to do. Good day to you. I've heard you're the, go you're the goblin to come to when in search of certain rare items. You've come to the right goblin. I'm in fact looking for a hairpin. I've had no luck for months now. I'm at my wit's end. I hope your reputation is deserved. No pressure. I'm after any hairpin. Unfortunately, don't think we have that. Okay, and the shopkeeper isn't here. We also have a personal space. So unless we get lucky... I guess let's... Let's start with the uh, the obvious, whatever is the actual... Well, we found the hairpin. That's one heck of a hairpin. Why does a lizard want a hairpin? You've used all your time today. Each time you've uncovered a trinket, you use up a time slot. Tracked in the UI on the left of the screen, you can still buy and sell, and talk to NPCs and whatnot. Okay. There we go. Put it over there, but unless they've moved on... Uh, let's see. We can sell the hairpin. Oh my, however did you know? This is exactly what I was after. I'm just that good. Deal? Deal. Ooh-hee, that's what I'm talking about. I mean, um, well, it's a fair pri prize. I just really like this a lot. Thank you. All right. I guess the dude forgot that I was, uh, he had told me. There we go. Yeah, dude forgot that he told me he wanted a hairpin. Hey, goblin. Hey, boss man. I told you before, I don't like it when you call me boss. This is a partnership. This boss of yours is a lovely old has a lovely old sponge if you're after one. Yes! That'll be 100, 100 gold if my math's right. How much? I got a spender, and that's what I that's what they say. Let's go for it. Here you go. You'll make better use of it than me. Don't forget, I'm taking the wagon on that trip for a couple of days. So take care of the shop while I'm away. Can't wait to use it. Have fun. Okay, day's end. So goblins do not do crunch. Navigate to your personal space, go to bed. I love how, like, just cluttered this is, but in a very, like, organized fashion. That mop has... Okay, I'm not entirely sure what's going on with this mop, but, like, the weird boar head, the bookshelves, the other things. It's just a very lived-in looking shop. Especially when you take a look at this, like, little sleeping hole. I bet this would actually be painfully uncomfortable to sleep in. But some of it, some part of it just looks like, yeah, I'd love to sleep in a little nook like that. What's the map? I guess we can just look at the map for reference. It doesn't look like we have anything else. We can, like, turn off the candles, though, which is kind of nice. I don't think it does too much. It'd be neat if it actually changed the ambiance of the room. But I think a lot of the lighting is baked in. Anyway, bedtime. Okay, so we've got unlocked pref tool sponge one. Discovered bottle and a hairpin.
Okay, so first and foremost, I'm gonna pull this bottle out. I think this is probably meaningless. Considering it's, you know, a bottle. But like, why not we're here? We have it and somebody might really want a pristine bottle and you never know. I don't think there's any time pressure for this game either, so we can just kind of take our time with it and not worry. And who knows, if if there's somebody that wants a bottle, we can just uh, do what we want. Or if somebody wants a bottle, we can just, you know, offload it onto them. Okay, well, I guess I'm going to have to get those pieces. I almost kind of wish the time element was based on how many... How much time you spend actually working on the pieces to give you kind of a little bit of extra time based on efficiency. Okay, so it's going to tell me about the sponge. We don't have anybody that's shown up yet. The one other thing I could consider is actually just getting everything I can out of the bag and then cleaning them later, depending on who sh shows up and wants what. Because we don't know who the next person is going to be. We don't know what they're going to want. They're probably going to want a war horn just because. Or a drinking horn. Speak of the, the person who probably wants the horn. Clean the croft. <laughs> oh, well, I never. A new shop that I've never visited before. What fun. Hello, strange goblin who I've never met. Hello, customer I've never met. Ah, yes. Mm, well, now. Looking for grandma's egg. Is that something you might have, perchance? I'll see what I can do. Yeah. After a clean grandma's egg. See, that might be an issue. And this is why I was like, maybe we don't... Okay, there it is. Oh, that's deep in there. Okay, can't... Oh, right. That's how this works. There it is. Yeah, they're kind of these neat little geode things. I don't know why I'm trying to be efficient with my actions since I'm not being judged for time. It is kind of meaningless for me to be like this particular. I should just be like chiseling my heart out. Okay, we got grandma's egg and we have just enough time. But yeah, I think I think I will stop cleaning things unless somebody specifically asks for it. As silly as that sounds. We'll come back and clean later once we've got like a glut of items. We'll just have a big cleaning day or something. So I might as well mention that the demo is, it's either available now or it's going to be available as part of the next fest. So if you do want to pick pick this up and play it, I think the demo is kind of beefy. Uh, originally it was like half an hour's worth of, of gameplay and I think now it's up to an hour and a half, which for me is a much, much better, uh, as a weird, as a weird egg. Uh, it's a much better duration. I don't know, half an hour is kind of tough. Oh, keep sell. Oh my, what are the chances? This is exactly what I was hap uh, exactly what I was after. A coincidence, I'm sure. Deal? Deal. This is perfect. I'm sure I'll see you again soon. Now let's just go back to our personal space. Oh, is it not it's not nighttime yet? So we actually have one more time unit. Sure. I will do more for, I mean, seeing as I'm here. Okay, do we have another one? Yeah. Oh, I did, did already have it. Anyway, let's, no, I probably shouldn't be clicking this much. It is kind of satisfying to just like, super clean this just by like chiseling my heart out. But that is also going to make my RSI flare up in the worst possible way. So I really shouldn't shouldn't be doing that too often. Too too much elephant kettle. 
Okay, now that's for sure the end of the day. Well, we don't have any other... We don't have any other tasks or customers. Night falls, sales 217. I'm not sure what we're going to be spending money on. To my knowledge, I don't think we pay rent either. I'm going to turn the candles on. Feels weird not having them on. Nothing here. Yeah, I wonder if there's better tools to get our hands on later. The problem is a lot of the... Uh, a lot of the things to clean are... Let's see. It's fairly easy to clean them. And so, unfortunately for me, uh, well, I don't know. I want to say, unfortunately, it doesn't feel like there might be as much of a progression system as I might otherwise hope for. Uh, not that these games need to have progression systems, but it's kind of satisfying to be able to, like, buy better tools to speed things up a little bit. I'm thinking, like, Power Wash Simulator. Like, there's very clear reasons for why you want to have the better washers. We got a goblin mask. It looks like we just get a new one every single time. So I'm, I'm probably just going to grab... Let's see. I'm probably just going to grab a little bit of all of these. And we'll just clean it up later. And who knows, maybe there will be just like harder blocks to kind of chip through. But it'd be interesting if there were certain artifacts certain blocks that you have to do like weird things with them like disenchant them or like get rid of the hex and maybe we'll actually get to that point i would like reasons to feel like i need to buy more tools i'm sure we will and maybe i just haven't gotten far enough to actually know like what progression systems are even going to be necessary over the course of this game I know they're supposed to be, like, kind of cool agates. And one, I actually feel kind of bad for chipping them away because they look cool. I almost kind of wish you could, like, store gem dust. Okay, so what do you want? Croc! Hello? Sokai says, like an elephant kettle to heat her tea. Or, I can't tell if it's the bird talking to me. I think it is. Sokai says she would like an elephant kettle to heat her tea. I'll have a look. Needs a clean kettle. Okay. Elephant kettle. Boop. Okay, that didn't actually cost me time. It's only completing the cleaning process. Which makes sense. It'd be interesting if you could actually save your, uh, like, get tools that reduce the amount of cleaning time or something like that. But it's not like time management is particularly critical here. Once again, it's not like you're struggling to pay rent or anything. I could see that actually being kind of fun as a, like, bonus mode or whatever. Like, give you a bit of survival pressure. Maybe just have a different landlord. Okay. Bottle. Elephant kettle. Boop. Nope. Boop. Craw! Glad you like it. Craw? Deal. Oh, no, it's definitely her. It's perfect. Sokar loves it. Okay, we've unlocked upcycling. A new upcycle tool has been added to your workbench. More than 20 fun new trinkets have been added to the stash. Use the upcycling tool on a clean trinket to get started. P to unlock up upcycling in future playthroughs. Neat. Oh. So how do we upcycle this thing? All right. Oh. Okay, upcycling. Use the upcycling tool on a clean trinket on the mat to begin upcycling. Open the stash, click on a trinket. Okay, while well, hovering over a trinket, over a valid socket. Okay, while well, hovering a trinket with the same connections. Wait. Are we... Oh! Oh! <laughs> what else do we have? 
goblin dagger blades, liars, bent nail handle, fist, pot handle, beer stein. So are we just mushing things together? <laughs> um fi <laughs> I'm going to save that fist. The bottle with the fist is really funny, but I think this works better. What about the bottom? <laughs> For drinking on the go <laughs> or, or something. I'm not, I'm not entirely clear. I don't think the pot handle is really the way to do it. I think this is fine. I think this is good enough. Maybe I have to. Bent nail handle. No, that just looks wrong, man. What about wooden chunk handle? No, actually, the pot handle was kind of the, the deal. We've... <laughs> okay. This is elevated, in my opinion, into whatever the heck that is, this is. What is it called? Bottled cork beer stein handle handle beer. Wait. Bottle cork beer stein handle beer stein pot handle. <laughs> All right. Grandma's egg. What can we upcycle you into? This is a amazing. Oh, I can only add two things. I was hoping I could give her knife eyes. Well, acorn drum lid. Oh, well, that's just kind of pleasant. And a lich crown. It doesn't quite fit. Miniature wizard hat. Hell yeah. I don't know if I want to add a bottle down there. But I love the idea of grandma's acorn wizard egg. What about... Human dagger blade. Can add a pot. Goblin dagger hilt. Well, that, I mean, that just makes sense. And a human dagger pommel. Goblin dagger palmer, pommel. Put this back. So we could actually do a human dagger hilt. So we could actually just make a complete human dagger. Sure. And I don't think this costs me any time. Or maybe it does. It probably does. Uh, let's see. Is there anything else? Glass eyes, ivory, hair combs, goblin lanterns. I don't know. I think we're just going to go to bed. It's late enough anyway. I want to see what customers want. I've discovered bedpans. That's a thing. Okay, let's let's just go back to cleaning things off. I love the upcycling system. I think that's going to be a lot of fun. I'm curious about its practicality. And so once I have a better view of, like, how that's all going to integrate. Let's see. There we go. And once I have a better idea of how it's going to integrate into kind of, like, my play style and, like, what people are going to want then it'll make my job easier. Because I could just end up upcycling a bunch of things that I don't need. Maybe if it was one of those that the, uh, the more times you click with the chisel, the, or the less you click, the more of like a money boost you get when selling it to kind of account for the condition of the 
uh, let's see, to account for the condition of the objects you're cleaning up. I don't know. I, I think it's fine as is. I think my brain is just like, but maybe it's too easy. But on the flip side, I guess that is kind of what cozy games are supposed to be. They're not really supposed to be heinously difficult by any measure. At least not generally. I've definitely played a couple of cozy games where I'm just like, oh yeah, that's... You know, that's that wasn't easy. I'm trying to think of a good example. I mean, Stardew Valley, cozy as heck, but definitely not garden grade, depending on what you're, what you're doing. The moment you're going for those like legendary fish, it's like, okay, yeah, this is suddenly hard. There we go. I really appreciate with the geodes, like, as, or geodes, really everything in this. As soon as you've cut off all of the connecting tissue, everything else falls off. I don't know. Feels good. Where's that? There it is. Okay, got a handle pot. Oop. And somebody wants a thing for me. Hello, do you want one of my Franken creations? What a quaint looking shop. I like it. I need a hoard for, hoard for drinking. My old one got a bit too close to the furnace. I'll have a rummage. Clean horn for drinking. Ain't gonna stay clean long looking at them. What is this thing that they've got? I'm not sure. Okay, uh, let's see. Clean drinking horn. So we do actually have the horn, but can I upcycle it? Odd that I can't add like a loop or a strap or a drinking horn lid. I mean that that just makes that just makes sense. Okay, so where's where's the drinky horn? Drinky horn with lid. Doesn't seem like it really improved the value much. This is exactly what I was after. Wonderful. Deal? Deal. This is great. I'll make sure to visit again when I'm next in town. Give me that money. Not sure what I'm going to spend the money on. Oh. I guess we already had a... Oh. Oh. Oops, whatever. I'm sure it's fine. But yeah, I was wondering why it didn't improve the price much. And the answer is because I didn't throw it in the bag because I'm a goofus. I don't know why playing this makes me want to play Picross like, really badly. I guess I haven't played a Picross game in a while, but I think it's something about just, like, finding the shape in the mess. Very much fits the, the overall vibes. Okay. Let's just kind of... I, I mean, I don't know. I'm just going to kind of keep revealing things. I like the upcycling system, but I... Uh, I guess really we've just got to wait until the next day. There we go. It is a mechanical mask. Oh, that's a thing. Wait, we have another person? We do. Good day. I hear the goblin with all access to all sorts of unusual items. Yes. I need a bottle. Can you help? I'll see what I can do. I need a clean bottle. Hello. <laughs> okay, so that's 145. What's a regular bottle get us? 11. Oh, okay, so upcycling is uh, super worth it. <laughs> Enjoy my Franken bottle. I like it. That's great. Deal? Deal. That This is great. <laughs> she looked like a spy master, and I just gave her, like, the most Franken bottle thing ever. 
Let's see if that mechanical mask stays on the table. It probably will. One other mechanic that I'd love to see for this, but it would probably be kind of silly or unnecessary, would actually be having to like restock items. Like, um, you actually have to like haggle with certain adventurers for their stuff. Mainly I'm thinking like, it'd be kind of charming if, uh, it'd be a charming way to have a bunch of really cute cameos of various characters. And maybe that wouldn't, like, really appeal. The developers want to stay away from that kind of thing or something like that. I was just thinking, like, yeah, you could totally have just, like, the Moonlighter kid come in and, like, dump something off. Got any flies? Uh, no. Well, in that case, I put a mask for the festival. Is that something you could do? I believe I can. I need a clean mask. Okay, so let's go back to the workbench. We've got a couple of masks. Let's just go with the goblin mask since it is clean. I should probably sponge off some things. But uh, let's upcycle the heck out of this boyo. So we've got... No. We're gonna save that for later. Wait. <laughs> this feels like a crime. <laughs> Goblin lantern. Oh, but it's not clean. We should probably clean it off. Beerstein lid. What about the dagger? <laughs> Uh, let's do a hairpin tassel. And one glass eye. Oh, that's freaky looking. <laughs> I'm sorry. It's, it's just too good. Alright, let's put it away. If I can, there it goes. Don't ask me how it fits anywhere. <laughs> a goblin mask. This would be perfect. Glad you like it. Deal? Deal. This goblin mask is so fun. I'll definitely be back after killing somebody with it. <laughs> I was not expecting to make that much money either. Oh, I'm actually crying a bit. All right. Well, I think I could keep chipping away at this game, at least for a little while, but I think rather than that, I think I'm I'm instead going to include this as part of, well, I guess you already know that this is an indie game lightning round video. Largely because, I don't know, it feels like there's a lot of stuff left to be tapped in the game and I want to conserve my enthusiasm for it. Uh, so that when I'm playing it, I'm playing an ideal version with all of the features. I mean, even now playing this, yeah, I played the previous demo a couple months ago and rather loved it. Uh, but it still had that kind of feeling of like, eh, it's still missing some stuff. And I'm going to say it still kind of has that overall vibe, which, I mean, go figure, it's incomplete. It's it's not done yet. I guess we should sponge some things up in retrospect. Can I actually pull, like, multiple things out and sponge them all? I can. Useful. Not that it matters too much, but... Uh, you know, it feels like there there needs to be a little bit more. Maybe that shopkeeper comes back. Maybe she will over the course of this game. And I do like the, the cleaning. It's very meditative and whatnot. I think just the gamer in me is just like, oh, but I need some kind of goal. I need something to work for. I need need to pay rent, which obviously, like, that's probably not a good mindset to be in. Um, but... Otherwise, it's one of those where it's like, I, I think I need that, like little bit of a push right now uh, to have something to work towards other than massive quantities of money by mushing a bunch of things together. I liked the um, 
I like the fact that you can mush things together. I do feel like uh, just giving me access to a whole bunch of items right off the bat so I can make stupid amounts of money uh, was funny, but all of a sudden I'm like, well, I'm rich. It's like turning on a cheat code when you didn't mean to. I think it works well for the demo just to introduce what the feature is and see what people do with it. Uh, but I also think from a like gameplay perspective, yeah, it, it does kind of um, spoil the fun just a little bit. But again, not going to be a problem when the actual full game comes out. I do really like where it's going, though. It's got such a lovely aesthetic and the idea of slowly cleaning off everything. I mean, it's very. It's it's very. Power wash simulator. I think the one thing I would say is I wish the cleaning, like the cruft and the washing, I actually wish that was all part of one action. And it, uh, maybe kind of the faster you get through it, you know, the less, uh, the less like chiseling you have to do. The, uh, oh, we do actually just, uh, oh boy, it's a guy. The less chiseling you do, maybe the more time it saves or the more money you get or something like that. And then cleaning, but maybe there's some like more, uh, some more bits that you have to like clean off afterwards with like a fine brush or something. I don't know, just add layers of complexity so it's like actually legitimately difficult to clean these things up. Even the point of like, you know, maybe there's um, tarnishing and so you have to kind of figure out how to buff things off and that's another tool and another process and maybe more time that you can possibly optimize to make more money faster. I don't know. It, it feels like there's a lot of ways that they can go with this, but I do really like the upcycling. I think making that goblin mask was a hoot and the bottle. So let's see what this guy wants. You look like a shop that asks no awkward questions. I try not to. Looking for a clean bedpan. No questions, please. I'm on it. I'm desperate for a clean bedpan. Okay. Yeah, let's have bedpan golem be the last. So do we have a bedpan? I would love to be able to search. Oh, here it is. But here's the question. What can I upcycle with this bad boy? Barely anything. Okay. What? <laughs> oh, good. You can rotate things. <laughs> it's it's perfect. It's the lich's bedpan for all of the skeleton poops. All right, yeah, let's go. Let's go hand this over. Desperate for a clean bedpan. Have your. <laughs> it's worth 400 gold. <laughs> this looks good. Excellent. Deal. Deal. Let's make a perfect yarn holder. Hell yeah. <laughs> All right. I think this is good enough for now. So uh, just to repeat, uh, the Trash Goblin demo is available on Steam now. So if you want to play it yourselves, just follow the link in the description below. It's pretty chill. And obviously it's got way more that I haven't even touched yet. I don't know if there's going to be more features added at a later date uh, to the demo or if there's more features I just haven't found yet. Uh, I'm sure there's all sorts of objects that I have yet to kind of chip through. Oh, right. We don't have enough time. That's fine. Anyway, uh, let's see. Yeah, I guess let's just move on to the next. But I'm going to keep an eye on this one and very much look for uh, and am very much looking forward to playing more. Hey everyone, Wonderbot here, and welcome to Wizard of Legend 2. It is, I, you know, honestly, I'm going to say it's it's effectively a, a Risk of Rain 2 style glow up from Wizard of Legend 1, where this time around it's uh, it's full 3D and four player co-op as opposed to two player co-op, which should actually be really cool. We'll have to see how it goes. So this is just the demo at the moment. I'm not entirely sure what the limitations are. Uh, or how everything's gonna function, but I'm just here to have some fun. Wizard of Legend wannabes, welcome to the Trials of Legend. I'm Madame Moulin, your commentator extraordinaire. So grab your arcana and hold on to your relics. Let the games begin. Okay, so looks to be the same. Here's the question. Hmm. Bump that up a little bit. Oh, frame rate limit in the background. 
I wanted to double check. I'm going to set this to full screen. It didn't feel like it was going for the right resolution here. Yeah, there we go. That's nice and crisp. All right, wizard. It's showtime. Teach them a lesson. This actually looks like it might be, like, much more accessible. OG Wizard of Legend was slightly frustrating. Uh, it was very fast-paced and kind of brutal. But putting this in a 3D space and having it be slightly less platform-focused might actually give it a little bit more uh, leeway. With some quick thinking and even quicker spell casting. Looks like those enemies never stood a chance. Okay, the other thing I need to do is uh, V-Sync. There we go. I gotta remember, I'm very much one of those people that needs to have V-Sync on. I should figure out what I need to do to not need it on. It's some kind of like refresh rate monitor business that I've just never bothered to learn. But for now, it's fine. Anyway, if this feels better, there's no death pits to fall into, which I think is probably for the best. Ow. Not to say that, like, the original format in... Ooh. Why is it telling me to go this direction? This looks kind of vaguely boss fight-y. If I go this way. I know there's a way to get the map to show up. Signature, blue bar... Beneath the health gauge represents signature. It's our ultimate. Uh, once it's full, it gradually diminishes over time and is lost if unused. So I should use it. Okay. The only question is how? Oh, I see. It's just a super version of our regular spell. Ah. And is this it? Nope. Okay, so whatever this was, totally extraneous, pure... Side element, nothing to worry about. Our wizard is stepping into the ring. Arcana at the ready. Sparks are about to fly. I was not expecting to have running commentary here. Oops. Don't get stuck by that. So the only immediate problem is I'm lacking in mobility here. And these little guys are quick. Oh, that thing. is what's spawning them. There we go. Okay, the auto-aim is a little tricky. It's very much based on, like, where I've pointed my character, which is mostly fine. Archolith statues are scattered throughout the floating lands. Those hold the reward for clearing a level. Remember, if you don't touch the Archolith when you're done, you won't get your reward. Okay, so Imp's left hand. Fast and light hand that fights besides you by throwing fireballs at enemies. Dashing through enemies burns them. All burn effects are more powerful. I think I'm just going to go for Imp's left hand for the time being. I'm going to modify some of the sound settings here so we can actually hear her. Huh, fun fact, this is adding voice chat as just kind of a native thing. Neat. Okay, this should be much better. Maybe. There we go. And now we're on to the proper run. Maybe. Unless that last one was the proper run. We'll find out. I don't know if the wizard left hand is... Or the imp's left hand is going to be amazing. It doesn't seem to fire very often. I was just figuring... It seemed like a somewhat practical thing to grab. Uh, if I need to do, like, hit and run combat... Okay, stay away from that. There we go. Ooh, weird chest. All challenges terminated. A successful combat outing. Now, turn to page 332 in your textbook. Uh, wait, you don't have a textbook. What an egregious oversight. So they're still keeping the combat tournament vibe with this game. Go fight the monsters. Maybe fight a boss. I don't know what that is. Some kind of purple shard? I guess we got 10 of them now, so whatever they're useful for, cool. Now we can check this. Okay, we can check that. None of this 
seems to trigger... No? Can I not? Oh, I see. Yeah, I just want to get rid of whoop, one of the archers. If I can. Okay, so there's less... Less of a tell with melee combat. Which shouldn't be that big of a deal. I don't plan on getting into melee yet. Or at least not that much yet. Oh. Might as well just hit him with that. Stay away. Grab the loot. Oh. Berserking Sandwich. After being hit, there's an opportunity two seconds to heal yourself by hitting enemies. Each hit heals you for 10% of the last damage received. Interesting. So, it's not going to keep all the damage off, but at least keep some of them off. Okay. Just freeze that one. You are a all good. Of good health and masterful skill. Don't want to get hit by rock. That would be rude. Use the door. Oh, okay. So that actually... That goes for... As far as it wants to go. Okay. I'm assuming the purple... Glimmer. Yeah. A few enterprising merchants have set up shop within the floating lands. A word of warning, wizard. They've all taken a vow of silence to prevent haggling. Okay, so we can buy... Not much. So evading enemies charges your signature. Let's see. Receive healing equal to 10% of gold received. Attacking burning enemies with lightning arcana resets burn duration. That's pretty good. Slowed enemies with water arcana will freeze them. Slamming fractured enemies into walls damages them or health. I think we save up and go get Mordion's gem. I was hoping that one of these would have cash for me, but looks like not. I'm gonna need a smidge more money. Okay. Avoid the golem, dude. I guess there are death pits. But the death pits are slightly more sensible, question mark. Excellent use of the environment to overcome challenges. I'm glad I can knock them into the death pits. Okay, let's go get, let's go back to that shop now that we have the money. We might as well get heal for 10% of gold received, even if it's not much. That's going to keep a lot of the damage off of me. Bottled red lightning I could also see being quite good. You must begin testing it immediately. But I haven't actually, like, built around lightning. I don't even have a lightning... Ability. I'm not even sure if I can set enemies on fire. Okay, there goes one archer. There it goes. I like the falling Rinse animation. Repeat, wizard. Congratulations. Now get ready to do that for every section in the jungle, desert, and castle biomes. After that, you will face Hieronymus in battle and become the new Wizard of Legend. Simple. Well, this guy's familiar. I think he even did those animations previously. I do miss some of the pixel art charm. Earth, but they lack your education and skill. Whoop. Okay, right. And I'm down. Ouch. Alright, that's fine. I didn't really expect to win. I also had a very bad dash. Shouldn't Hieronymus's mansion be bigger, more magical, and cleaner than this? Once I've become the Wizard of Legend, 
I'll scatter magical props all around, and perhaps install a magical disco ball. You make sure to pick clean them corpses' pockets. Pockets? How about we focus on where to dump them first? Running out of grave here. Are these wizards dead? No, they're all just having a little lie down. <laughs> Playing around of nap in the box. Who do you think you are? Tombstone tricksters? Coffin comedians? From the Bureau of Burial Clowns? Show some respect for the dead. Dropping like flies, they are. How much respect can- Kotools, why are you here? Paying, Paying respect, respect? Gathering, gathering the, the corpses. corpses. How many times must I meticulously specify? The main courtyard is off limits. Return to your task immediately. Welcome to the mansion of Hieronymus the Legend. Banish those negative thoughts. Allow neither fear nor hesitation to undermine your bravery and determination in facing the trials ahead. The trials of legend are long and arduous, but you will surely triumph. I hate to bring this up now, but can I return for the next round of trials? I don't think I'm ready this time around. Ooh. So we select a registered wizard. Okay. That's a little dark. So, increases evade chance by 8%. Evading also triggers your revenge effects. Increases movement speed by 10% or healing effects are improved by 25%. I think I might want to go for the rogue boots. The evade chance is tempting, but maybe not yet. From the observatory, I can see the wizards still wandering in the forest. Wizardry lacks the seriousness it once had. It's merely a game for everyone, and they're not particularly strong at it. Despite all the arcana cards I've provided in the trials, we need a more exciting show. Mm, I need to personally oversee your run and see what's going on. This is the observatory. Using this orb's power, we can view any wizard's progress through the trials. Every step of your journey to become Wizard of Legend will be recorded for all to see. And so will every time you pick your nose during the trials. Behold, the Apparatus, greatest creation of the renowned Geomancer Nazaradin. This mysterious device uses the power of mystical chaos gems to enact change on the trials of legend. If brave wizards continue to provide it more resources, it will become more powerful still. You left your greatest creation in the hands of a teenage girl, Nazruddin. You and the apparatus are both jokes. Psst. Wizard, do you know anything about the last wizard who made it to the end of the trials and disappeared? Oh, crap. My Aunt Mulan is watching me. The apparatus is amazing, right? This beauty is my favorite part of the trials. Can I, can I use it? No, so I'm assuming this is meta progression, but later. Over there is the yard. This is the main hall. And behind me is the training ground from which you can enter the trials through the portal. Honestly, why am I explaining these obvious things? The Echo Gems are installed throughout the mansion to inform wizards about everything they need to know. Don't knock on my door, you idiot! I want to sleep! How would you have your bedroom so close to everything... everything that's going on here? Oh, well. This brush is a model Chroma C Chromomancy brush enchanted to function on its own. That 
That means it can make new arcana with the touch of a button. No user skill required. Because modern wizards can't be bothered to learn the skills behind arcana creation. Kids these days. Well, I don't think I can use it now. Oh, I see. That gives me my signature. So this lets me swap my arcana around. So let's do exactly that. So we got Earth Knuckles, Fireball, or Aromancer's ga Grasp. Carries you swiftly to your opponent. Flurry. Okay. What about Signature? We have Zephyr Whirl and Stone Strike Kick. Let's see. So, Breakers of Time at Water Dragons Rush Forward. Gust Volley. Piercing Winds in a Cone. Lightning Spear. Spear of Lightning damages and makes targets airborne. Shock at the point of landing. Or a Terror Ring. And unfortunately, more of these I'm going to have to unlock later. I don't know. Do we want to do wind, wind? Yeah, let's do wind, wind, water or something. This form is the library of Arcana you and the other wizards competing here have unlocked. As you create more Arcana on your quest to become wizard of legend, the tome will fill with more and more options. Just remember, the Arcana doesn't make the wizard. If you don't know what you're doing, you're still going to look like a fool and then die. Wait. Okay, signature we want basic. I don't know if I'm going to like this stone fist that much. Ambrogio, the magical wardrobe, contains our collection of enchanted robes. Each robe has a different effect. Try them on as you unlock them. They may have different effects, but they're all ugly. All right. Hey there, I'm Nasreddin, your commentator in this run. So, get set for a whirlwind of magical chaos and unexpected gems. Okay, so they don't block. They don't block and melee attacks. Concludes our skirmish. With our wizard emerging triumphant, like a phoenix soaring from Oof. the ashes. Or perhaps more like a determined pigeon hmm? who's savaging for breadcrumbs. Okay, so the pits still hurt. Pretty bad, actually. So I'm going to have to keep that in mind. And behold, the stage is set for a delightful spectacle of spell slinging. There we go. I gotta watch out for the little golems. Because they're just fast enough to keep up with me. Our wizard has orchestrated a magical symphony, uh, leaving their adversaries in awe. Okay. Let's leave the mid boss alone for a moment. Ow. I'm not going to be able to stun this guy. Replace it with the diamond standard. Why ever would we do that? Oh, I stunned him. Like diamonds. There we go. So Im's left hand wasn't very good. If you have more than 250 gold damage, will be up. Nah, more damage to staggered enemies. I don't like the prosperity sigil. Splendid! To new adventures and shinier treasures. Yeah, the first region goes by quick. I don't remember it being this fast. 
it, it seems we've stumbled upon another little skirmish. I like the idea of the commentators. I might have to shut them off eventually, though. Is that it? Mainly from the perspective of... Like, eventually... They're just going to be slightly annoying to listen to once, you know, once I've listened to them a bunch of times already. Unless they have, like, unique dialogue or eventually start just being quiet. It might also be one of those that they'll be more, uh, more pleasant to listen to, uh, or no. Does not glitter. This stuff is shiny, though. He was blocking my hits. All right. Uh, and even more so, chances are I'm not going to want to listen to them while I'm playing co-op because that's going to be even more distracting. Probably. Why do monsters have gold on them. It's weird. Oh, they are technically Haranimus's employees. They draw a paycheck, just like you. Okay. I want to get rid of those. I like this water dragon attack. The fire dragon one's good too, don't get me wrong. Whoops. Just send him into the pit. But yeah, the water dragon attack does uh, a lot of damage. How do I zoom in on the remains? Why would you want to? I will admit, I think for solo, having the commentators with voice, I might keep that up just because some of those lines are actually kind of funny. Ooh, what is this thing? Oh, spirit shards, probably. Break it, meta progression. But I don't think we can do meta progression at the moment. Okay, let's see what we got. Uh, let's see. Max HP by 50. Damage for every status effect. Air damage by 20%. Enemy comes out of shocks, zaps, and shocks adjacent enemies. Won't shock the same one. And then stone mace. So we just want the extra air damage. 100%. Shines when beaten. Wizards, not so much. So try not to get beaten. Okay, grab the pinwheel, get the damage. I will send a bill to your next of kin. Onward, we venture to new realms of challenge and intrigue. Okay, so the big one to remember is the bosses tire themselves out. I... Or do they? Yeah, there it is. It's going to take a couple of runs to win here. Uh, let's see. Dealing a crit to enemies heals you. I mean, that one's real good. Should the wizard's corpses linger in the trial's levels? Never. Fetch the bodies and channel their chaos gems into the apparatus for all wizards' benefits. This feels kind of dark, actually. Yo. Wizard, heard anything about the last one who made it to the end of the trials? Faced Hieronymus and vanished? That poker face means you're clueless. Since you're playing the silent game, let me spill some tea. I am so not enjoying this forced internship for my Aunt Mulan in this mansion. The only thing keeping me sane is the apparatus. Give this gizmo a whirl. Just don't tamper with it. 
Cause then it's me who's gotta do the fixing. Can actually, hey, so we can actually do stuff. U utilizing Chaos Gems grants a diverse array of permanent buffs during the trial. So it actually just is meta progression. So each rank boosts HP. Chance to drop a small signature globe in fight. Uh, starting gold. Or wizards can perform an extra dash on pits. I'm probably just going to go for the HP just because. Well, I suppose I should have expected that. Few wizards can take a single lightning strike. Asking a wizard to face, confront, and subdue the lightning elemental may have been asking too much. What's that, wizard? It'll be different when you fight the lightning elemental? Then I shall place my faith in you. Better arcana cards means better chances in the trials. You're not a big deal out there in the real world? That's fine. Here in the trials, choose whatever arcana you want from the tome and become a wizard. Practice the arcana you choose on the dummies. Is this something I can interact with? No, it looks like kind of capped. Look, Dustopius. Among all the items in this mansion, a wizard has spotted us. I suspect, my dear Brumio, that it's our unexpected motion that has caught the wizard's attention, rather than us as sentient objects. It's better to be noticed for any reason than to be forgotten. Lost among these relentless dusts, these footprints of time. Greetings, valiant wizard. If you can hear us, I wish you success in seizing the chalice of immortality. Get lost, Nesredin. I'm not ready to come out and give a speech to improve your trials show. Ah! They put a lot of effort into these kind of like in-between moments. It's kind of clear that they're going for a Hades vibe, which, you know, can't really disagree with. I think let's go for, let's go for the Icy Blast again. I liked the Water Dragon. Let's go for that. I don't know. Do I try Stone Fist? Sure. And the other option I do have is all rock all the time. All rock all the time. Let's give this a shot. And right, anyway. Wizard, listen up. I'm your oh. eyes and ears from the observatory this time. Let's see if you can make it without me holding your hand. Remember, I'm watching. Ow. Well, that's not great. Victorious for now. But don't get too cocky. There's plenty more challenges ahead. Overall Red crystal. Ready, oh, health glow. into it. Yeah, the problem I have with the Earth Fist, especially in this one, is it has a smaller hitbox or it feels smaller. Ah, uh, looks like we're diving headfirst into some action. Chaos gems are pretty, but they're kind of useless for battle wizards. Well, I guess you could throw it at your enemies. They really can't just run past these guys. There we go. I don't think I'm super super keen on this one. The only reason why I'm going to stick it out is probably for that crit. All right, folks, it's combat time. Let's see if you've got what it takes to handle these baddies. Okay, so it looks like the crit heal is pretty minor, too. There we go. Avoid that. Some of a bunch. Sliming didn't do a whole lot of damage there, much to my chagrin. Okay, I think we've 
I think we weakened them. Unfortunately, our crit chance must I'll be painfully low. The trials are only going to get tougher from here. And Let's I'll see, here movement speed. From a comfortable distance. Let's just go for the crit chance. Because if I can get that crit chance up, I might be able to actually keep myself alive. I'm not betting on it. I, I'm pretty sure I'm toasted, but you never know. Because even just like a little bit of chip healing here and there is not gonna is not gonna make a difference. Let's see, we've got that, but I have no money, so we'll leave that for a bit. I didn't see any treasure chests the last time. The merchants will pay extra if you make little gold statues instead of giving them coins. Yeah, I'm not taking the earth moves. They've got some good AoEs to them, but uh, you put yourself in a lot of positions where you're just going to get smacked. Enemies are very quick on the draw. And kind of as they should be. But, like, I was trying to stunlock that guy with a fist, and he still got me with a punch. Make sure your wallet doesn't have a hole in it. You'll be scattering coins like breadcrumbs. Like right there, I, I do like a charge attack to get in get in close, and they still manage to get me a thwack. Which, like, yeah, to be fair, melee as a wizard is Careful risky and dangerous. On any broken pieces of that. Last time I nearly cut off my toe. Think I got it? Yep. Tear stone increases damage by 20% when you're below 50%. I don't think anything belongs in museums. Museums were a mistake. Yeah, the fist takes so long to swing. I think the issue, I, I'm just gonna repeat, is mostly just that the, um... Don't just spend your money on potions. The fists are small. There are more important things to buy. It felt like they were considerably bigger in the original version of this game. Oh, there's like a little character por portrait change when we do our super. I'm gonna go back to the merchant. Unfortunately... Oh, okay. I was hoping I could just sprint through that at high speed. The answer is no. Well, if there was a round to learn that lesson, it would be this one. Homing projectiles every time you're hit. Hand fights behind, besides you. Freezes enemies with every attack. Frozen enemies with an earth arcana. Fire damage by a little bit. After dashing... 100% crit chance. Otherwise, I could just buy health. I'm gonna just buy the health. The assassin boots are actually kind of tempting, but the healing from my arcana isn't that good. You can keep a secret, can't you, wizard? I've noticed Alethea sneaking out after her bedtime to explore the mansion. I've decided not to turn her in. Mulin and Naswadin would throw a fit if they found out. And who wants to deal with that? She's smart, but she's still just a girl. Kids are going to rebel and push their limits, you know? Huh. There is actually some some degree I of... a little boy, I knew I would eventually find money inside pots. Now you're living my child self's dreams. How does it feel? Aww. It doesn't look like there's a map there. There used to be a map where you could see where everything is. Anyway, Earth Guy again? Earth Guy again. We both know you can smash them to pieces, so make it happen. I don't know how you're supposed to dodge that, apart from just being not near him.
Guess you weren't as invincible as you thought. Yeah, I... I like this a lot. It feels good. The bosses feel overtuned. But I think... I think they were always overtuned originally. The apparatus actually creates the stages of the trials. Don't let the fact that Mulan brought this talentless girl here and I had to put her on apparatus duty for her internship make you think she's doing anything special. She just presses a button. And after wizards die, the apparatus pulls in new chunks of land from various realms into the trials. Isn't it beautiful? Don't let her incompetence cloud your understanding of the apparatus's beauty and function. Can we yeet this guy into the sun? I must admit, Dystopius, this constant labor feels oppressive. Why should work dominate our existence? Oh, my dear Brumio, work isn't just a burden. It's the means by which we discover our purpose and establish our presence in the world. Surely there's value in contributing our efforts? Maybe so, but at what price? Are we to be forever bound to unceasing toil? Balance is key, my friend. We shape our work as it shapes us. A wise person once told me that true freedom is achieved by finding harmony in our efforts. Dear friend, I'd like to see if your wise acquaintance would maintain that view after laboring with Madame Moulin for a time. Sounds like it's time to unionize. The observatory is what lets us watch you during the trials. We monitor everything here, and in time, these recordings will be broadcasted to viewers worldwide. Can you stand and watch? Of course not. Only Sergic, Nasruddin, the Great Hieronymus, and I have that permission. Although Master Hieronymus has currently locked themselves in their room. It like I'm getting very tongue in cheek Hades from this. Uh, let's see, trial funds for extra money. Probably just do the extra dash over pits. I feel like this is probably going to get more substantial as time goes on. I'm seeing more currencies too. And I know eventually you start unlocking spells. I don't know if I have to beat a boss first or what. You know what relics are, kid? They're your ace in the hole for the trials. Nasruddin designed them perfectly to interact with various arcana. Why don't you guys pick the cool relics? Do I have to come to the observatory myself to see what the wizards are doing? Okay, well, at this point, I think we've pretty much seen every spell. We've seen every attack spell. Uh, I still don't like the stone fist. Uh, even from the last game, I wasn't a big fan of it. Let's see. Lightning. Oh, okay. I can see the lightning spear actually being quite good. Very set it and forget it in a good way. Uh, let's see. But yeah, I I like it a lot. I think the one problem is this suffers from the same problem that I think Wizard of Legend 1's like original pre-launch version did, which was it's overtuned, so it's hard to beat. Specifically, well, I mean, the game's always going to be hard. Wizard of Legend ain't easy, but uh, I remember the original like early versions of this game, the Kickstarter demo and whatnot. It was almost impossible to beat the first boss or two. Uh, that they were very brutal and hard hard to fight and hard to avoid and some other things. And uh, it seems like they're carrying on that tradition. They'll probably get easier uh, once the game's actually out. And also, eventually, we're going to be playing this potentially four-player co-op, which I'm curious to see. I'll probably play it like two or three, uh, just judging by like what friends I can, I can cobble together to play a run. Or three, we'll see. Uh, but I do like it. I like the different spells. I like the artifacts and the like visual... And mechanical improvements since the last game are pretty impressive. I do like the fact that there are NPCs uh, to actually talk to in town. and gives the game more personality. The one thing I will say is the personality is particularly sour as most of the NPCs kind of suck. But I think that's kind of the point as well. 
I'm also curious to see where they go with the meta progression that can either break the balance of the game or make it more fun. I don't know. We'll see where it goes. Soft difficulty curves and whatnot, but also grind walls. It's hard to balance and hard to work with. I'm always a huge fan of the, hey, please just give me maximum meta progression so I can get to the fun bits faster. But I could also see that very much just completely destroying any semblance of of balance or progression the game might have. And so you just start power stomping right from the get-go. Who knows? Anyway, uh, with all this said, I think I'm going to move on uh, just as part of the the uh, indie game lightning round. Just because I could keep chucking my face at the wall. But I think I'd rather pick up pick this up and play it later on. But if you want to play the demo now... It is available on Steam right this very moment, so just follow the link in the description below, and you can play some Wizard of Legend 2. I don't think it's got multiplayer yet. I haven't seen anything about that, so that'll have to that'll have to wait for a later date. But for now, at least, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time. Why, why am I doing an outro in the middle of a video? <laughs> all right, and with that, this is the end of what our second indie game lightning round video i this formula is going to take some tweaking and fine tuning to really get to the point where i can i can do it confidently and smoothly but that's fine it's fun to experiment with and i hope you guys enjoyed all the demos i played and there's so so many more i'm going past countless ones that might not go up on my channel for years or months or you know might have to be launch might have to be it's 1.0 launch who knows but all of these have just I'm just blown away by the sheer quantity and the sheer quality of demos present present as part of this next fest. So quick reminder, of course, that if any of these appeal to you, one, the demos are available via the link in the description below. And if they did appeal to you and you do want to pick them up at some point, or if they just seemed cool and you want to support, you know, their growing visibility, make sure to go to Steam and add them to your wish list as they will rank higher on these lists and upcoming lists, and just in general, will help the developers out immensely. But with all of that said, if you like this video in any way, shape, or form, leave me a like, helps more than you know. And if you want to see more rad new demos every single day, especially for the next two weeks, then hit subscribe because I've got tons, tons of these games that I want to check out. Almost every single game, okay, not every single game. I'd say it's about 50% of the games we've gone past. I'm like, yeah, I'd, I'd want to cover that. I want to play Sumerian 6. I'd love to play Blade Chimera. Uh, this one looks neat. I mean, just go down the list, and there's so many to check out and try. But for now, at least, thank you all so much for watching. I'll see you next time.